Hello, hello. Today we're going to start a what's inside video. Take this weed eater apart and see what goes on, how things work, and uh, what makes it go. This weed eater, I've deemed it unrebuildable. It just needs too much work, so I'm just not even going to work on putting it back together. I'm just going to show you the parts inside of it. This is a Ryobi SS30. And it's time it was a good weed eater. Here's the expanded on it where you can change out the different uh, ends on it. Which right now, I'm going to pull this one off and make it easier to deal with. One end. Alright, we're going to start working on taking this bad boy apart. right here by taking off the clutch housing. Taking a Ryobi apart with a Ryobi. Here's your throttle trigger, your cable, and your kill switch in here. This is your prop shaft. It doesn't come out of there, does it? This runs to the very end of the weed eater. Let's see. Here's your clutch. This is a centrifugal clutch. So this can free spin until the engine's running. When the engine runs, there's little shoes inside that open up and then they clamp against this and then they'll spin with the motor. Here's where your pull start would be, but this one's broken off. Part of the reason why I decided it wasn't worth building. Here is your throttle cable connected up to the carburetor. Here's part of your kill switch assembly. All this does is just ground out the coil where the spark doesn't get where it's going. Cover. This covers the back end of the crankcase. If any of these seals are no good, it won't run. As you can see, this is part of the reason why I'm not rebuilding it. It is full of junk. Don't even begin to know what that is, but it's nasty. This clutch should come off, but I'm not sure why it won't. But I'll still show you how this thing goes together. Even if I have to break parts. Fuel tank, 
heat shield that goes over the fuel tank to protect it from heat from right here. Let's see. Let me get another tool real quick. Alright, got this socket. Inside of this clutch there's a little bitty screw. You have to get in there with the flathead to be able to get off. Now as you see how this is spring loaded. As the engine spins up, the centrifugal force pushes these shoes out. Let's see. They're under pretty good tension, but they'll kick out along the sliders here, and that's how you get the friction to spin your weed whacker. Oops. So I gotta figure out how to get this off too. Give me another second. Alright. Get this clutch off, get your big pair of pliers, shove a screwdriver into the flywheel to keep it from moving, and pop it loose. Remember, it's reverse thread, so off is backward, you know what you would think. A nice little washer right here, pull your screwdriver out, front cover comes off. Here's your spool, if you ever want to be able to change your string, you get into it from here. And then you run your new string out through your hole and put a new handle on it. Alright, now we're getting into the basics of the engine. Look here, these are your little keepers. As you run your pull string, these get kicked out. And they get grabbed by the pull string and it spins the motor over. And then when the motor is ready and running itself, they kick back in. And then the, uh, that way they won't catch. So here's your flywheel. Little magnets right here are what makes your electrical for your spark. Here's a coil that picks that up. But then the coil sends the power to the spark plug. So let's see. Here's your coil. The way a coil works is as the magnetic passes, it creates a field in this here piece of metal. And that generates electricity in what's known as the primary coil. That runs from here through this switch to ground. If it's interrupted, it won't send power to the secondary coil, which is this one. So, if either one is grounded, it won't work. I'll save this, because that's still good. Alright, let's see. We'll pull the carburetor off next. This is, should be an air filter in here and a covering, but all of that's gone. And this is a two-cycle engine to um, answer any of those questions. Four cycle, it would run on plain gas and have oil in the crankcase. This is a two cycle, you mix oil in the gas. Alright, that's off of there. Should be off of there. Okay. So, good. That's screwed in place somewhere. Nope, this is nasty. Doesn't want to come off. Come off. There it goes. All right, here's your choke. And on this one, it's kind of funny. There's no choke flap. Usually there's a little flap right here. Let me show you one that actually has it. See, here's one that still has its flap. You close that, it's choked. It's half choked. That's wide open. That's when you run it normally. Then here's a primer bulb. This one's missing most of it. Alright. Now we get into how a carburetor kind of works. I'll give you a little basic rundown. I'll do a video another time of how a carburetor properly works. Here's your choke. It looks like this one just has an extra passage that gives it extra fuel. This is your throttle. When you pull the trigger, this moves. You see it opens up inside of there, that little valve. That's what allows you to get fuel and air in. And the way these work, 
prime this bulb, it brings fuel up from the tank into the carburetor. Down here is a little spring in the diaphragm, and as the engine is running, it makes little puffs, little bits of vacuum, and it activates this, so it's puffing. And that's basically priming the thing, instead of you pushing the button this whole time, when the engine's running, this is going, and it's sucking its own fuel in. So if your engine, like it'll run great when you prime it, but after it's running it'll die off and die, this little diaphragm's bad. And that's the carburetor. Let's see. Here we have gasket separating the engine from the carburetor. All nice and rusty. Come on. This is just an isolation gasket to keep heat from transferring from the engine to the carburetor. This is some gasket paper. Here's some wiring that's in the way. Right, come on, wait a minute. This is another isolation gasket. Come on. Might have to get the big drill for this one. Yep, be right back. Another ride would be. Should have started with this drill. There's your other isolation gasket. Another paper gasket, wires you don't need. Let's see. This is your exhaust pipe. Muffler. Also very nasty. The way a muffler works, if you look straight inside of there, well this one specifically it has a bunch of mesh. It you know catches the soot and the ash. The shiny piece here, this is a graphite gasket. Um the way a muffler works is the air goes in and it just bounces off of different pieces of metal and that takes the sound out of it. So now we're down to our cylinder head, spark plug, crankcase, and flywheel, but I'm not pulling that off, it's way too rusty. Alright, we'll pull the spark plug off. This tool is for a uh, chainsaw, so don't worry about it if you don't have one. It usually comes with a chainsaw. Pop your spark plug loose. That one is nasty. All that oil in there, that plug wasn't firing like it was supposed to. Alright, let's move on to the bottom end. We'll finish taking this thing apart. Get there, you can see down on the bore. Maybe pretty nasty in there. You can see it a little bit. Honestly, this one's not in terrible shape, it's not all scarred up. Well, toward the top, it is. It's junk. Here's your piston. Let's see if I can get a piston out. There we go. We have our piston, first and second compression ring. This is your keeper, the little spring right there, the wrist pin, which is what that moves on, same deal on the other side. This is your connecting rod, and then this is your um, bottom end bearing. There's a needle bearing because it's a two-stroke. And then that connects right here, this is your crankshaft. So when the engine's running, it's doing that. Let's see, I put this back on. So inside of your engine, every time you hear it bang, this piston is moved up and down twice. So as it's running, let's see if I can get it to go. Yeah. Well, it's not going. My hand's too big. Well, anyway, this piston's spinning up and down. I think it's usually about eight to 10,000 times a minute. So imagine how quick that is spinning up and down. 
but that's all it does is spin up and down and around. Now I'll tell you how this thing works. And it starts here, well, with your carburetor. So you got your fuel and air coming in through your carburetor. It passes through your little air passage there and it comes in through here. Your piston in a two cycle acts like a valve. So it's sitting in here, moving up and down. I said sitting in there, moving up and down. Okay, fine. Anyway, if you look in here, you see these passages on the sides. And then you have your inlet and your exhaust. Well, the way that this works is the piston moves all the way up and closes right before it's about to fire. It's pulling fuel and air in to the bottom end here. So as it moves up, fuel and air is displaced into here. As it moves down, it's creating pressure in here and it forces the fuel and air through these passages to the top side and that blows the exhaust gases out. So it's very simple but it's not very efficient because a little bit of unburned fuel and everything goes out the exhaust too. That's why these things are usually kind of greasy and nasty. So you're thinking your two strokes is intake and compression and downstroke is uh, the second intake and exhaust. So it's your power and exhaust stroke and then intake and compression stroke. Power and exhaust stroke, intake compression. And that's the basics of how a little two cycle um, weed whacker works. Let's do a quick review on all the parts we have. So we have our cylinder head, crankcase, flywheel, Then we have our crankshaft right here. We have piston, connecting rod, wrist pin, and keepers. Exhaust shield, spark plug, gasket, coil. This is what makes your spark. Carburetor. Another isolation gasket. Fuel tank. Plastic for air filter. Body. Reel for recoil starter. Here's your shaft, your power, I guess, uh, trans transfer power, or power distribution shaft, because you can attach different ends to this unit. And then this is the back end of your crate crankcase, and then a, I guess a safety guard. Throttle trigger here, and then we have the throttle cable, and then the kill switch. And that is your basics. Uh, in a muffler. That's your basics to a weed eater. And that's what they look like inside. If you enjoy my videos, please comment, rate, and subscribe, and thank you for watching.